Hello. It's been just over a year since Plasticity was released and boy oh boy has the software really matured in that time. In this latest release version 2024.1 we will cover some of the new features that really bridge that gap between solid modeling and surfacing and I really truly think that these new features uplift what is possible within Plasticity and I am not just talking about the x nerves, but we'll talk about the x nerves as well so stick around and let's get into it. Now it's been a little while since the last full update release of Plasticity and you may have noticed that the numbering convention has changed from 1.x, 2.x etc to a new numbering convention which goes by the year so like 2024.1 and so on and so forth. I personally do not mind how it's named or even how often it gets released on the sole condition that all of the updates are always bangers, so no pressure guys. Just a little bit of housekeeping regarding renewal pricing before we get into it. And if you're just here for the new features, feel free to skip ahead onto the next chapter. Now, in regards to the pricing, the price hasn't changed since they increased it slightly last year to $149 US for the indie license and $299 US for the studio license with 12 months of updates coming with each of them. Now the main difference between studio and indie with the exception of a few extra import and export options is that with the studio license at the moment you get X nerves which is a new surfacing feature. Uh, which we'll go into in a little bit and you also get access to the baser version of plasticity during your 12 months of maintenance. Upgrading and renewing just got a boatload easier with a dedicated page now for renewing and upgrading your license. When your one year of maintenance has expired it costs $100 US to renew an indie license and $175 US to renew a studio license. If you want to upgrade from indie to studio it costs $200 and you'll get an additional 12 months of update support. Okay, now if you're thinking about buying Plasticity, you can use the code REFUGE10 at checkout for 10% off the price. You get a bit of a discount and it helps out the channel as well. So use the discount code if that's what you're going to be doing. Now housekeeping aside, let's get into it. There's a bunch of new tools. Now what you can see on your screen is this um, uh, like late 90s uh, mobile phone in an orange uh, colorway. Um, I based this off the Alcatel phone that was the first mobile that I bought and I used pretty much all of the new tools to build this so I would have had a lot of a harder time to build something like this in the previous versions of Plasticity than I did with this one. So let's crack into it and let's look at some of the new tools. Okay alrighty so First of all, one thing that we should look at is people have been asking for this for ages. There was a hack, a way to do this before, but now you can get custom mat caps. Okay, so you can get all of your own mat caps in there or ones that you prefer um, for like looking at it or for even for modeling. Um, so I will go into that in another video. Um, and as you can see here, I can't get all of the um, thumbnails to work. Uh, I don't know what's wrong but once I've got that fixed I'll do another video on custom mat caps. So just so you know they're there um, and I think that's really cool. Okay so moving on to another new tool. Okay this one's not like an amazing tool um, but it is pretty cool and it's going to be pretty useful in some um, cases. I wouldn't call it a game changer but it definitely is something. So when you make a pipe and you bring it out like that, okay, and we can um, give it a, a section size, we can give, we can hollow it out, and now if we click scale, we can scale it down, okay, and it will scale down the top end of the, or the far end of the curve from where the section size pulley is, okay. So that kind of brings me on to the next um, item, which is full round fillets. 
it's, well, it's bugging out here, but if we click full, we're going to get a full round fillet. Now, this has got a slightly different behavior to be than before, and I'll show you why. But first of all, let's just take out a box, and we'll see what uh, the differences are. So we've got this box here. We'll just uh, make it a little bit more narrow. Okay. So when we do a fillet, you used to be able to hold down shift, and you'd be able to go to the middle and you'd get something like a full round fillet. If you kept holding down shift, you'd get this kind of arch, which is cool and it's useful in its own right. Now, if we do a full round fillet, which is, which you'll see here is a new, so we got the caudal fillets in one of the last updates, you know, to add to the Konica and the G2. If you were early adopter, we only had these two to begin with. Then we got this one and now we've got this one. Now what's cool about this, I don't exactly uh, know, um, Nick explained it better in his video on the Discord, but essentially what happens is that um, it tries to make a the, the center between these two uh, fillets uh, the point of the arc. So where that comes really cool is if we just um, build up a little uh, thing over here, okay, and we'll just make that and then we will scale this down, move it a little bit, pull this up through W to boolean it, and we'll pull this down a little bit. Previously we could do this, okay, and we could even pull it by holding shift quite far. Alright, but it's a bit funny. Now if we try and do this with a full round fillet, you'll see what happens, okay. So the center point between, no matter how fat that is, I mean, there's going to be a two point where it gets too fat and it'll fail. The center of the arc is always the equal distance between these two points. So this would be really cool for, I don't know, in this case, it looks like a ring. So jewelry design and stuff like that. So I think that is a really cool um, new feature and it's going to be really handy in a lot of cases. And then let's move on to the next one, which I personally think is possibly, and this is for both indie and studio license, but I think possibly this is the, the coolest new feature and it's CVs editing. So what we've got here, we've got a, a normal cube shape here. Okay, we can pull things in and out. Okay, we can grab edges, um, we can fill at them, we can chamfer them, we can pull G and we can pull them around a bit. You know, as long as you don't try and pull it too far or in the wrong direction, it's not going to work. Okay, so now you can either rebuild the curve, okay, which might work in some cases, but an easier way or a more precise way to do it is uh, you can raise the degree. Okay, so we go to raise degree, it's set to shift S just like subdivide. So you can kind of think about this like subdividing um, like you would in Blender. So now we've first subdivided it, we can now actually grab the point on that corner and we can pull it back like that. Okay, if we subdivide it again, we now have this point in the middle. So we've got four and then we can use that, but we can bring that out like that. And what's cool about this is you can do fillets and everything, but we've essentially done a little bit of surfacing and we haven't really gone out of solid modeling. So um, I think that's really cool. So it's, we're kind of uh, bringing so surfacing and the solid modeling uh, workflow together. So I think that's really, really cool. So um, you can make all sorts of cool shapes. And that phone that I showed you at the beginning, I made uh, using something uh, similar to, well, I, I made using uh, CVs a lot. Now, um, now that we've discussed that, let's get another shape um, cube. And now what we've also got is dependent offset. So we can make an offset now and just choose a face and it will match uh, the other face. Okay, so this is really useful. So it's a little bit like match face, okay? But you can do it from other um, areas. So for example, if I just had a something over here. I don't know if this will work or not. This might not be a great example. Let's offset it and choose this. Okay, you can see what's happened here. It's tried to match that face. 
And then what we can do is we can just bring that back. Okay, and we've got a really cool new shape. So this is like super powerful. So you can just sort of use the shapes that you've already established with these um, solid modeling tools. Okay, and, and then you can make even more new shapes. So this stuff, I don't know, if, if you knew watching this, all of this stuff wasn't really available before and you had to find other ways to do it. Um, and now we've got it, I think it's really awesome. And we can start to, if you look at that, we're getting these bulging surfaces. You, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm big on bulging surfaces. So this is really, really cool stuff and it's really, really powerful. Now, um, finally, I know there's other new features and stuff like that, but let's just talk about Xnerbs a little bit. So Xnerbs is sort of, it's not a replacement for lofting and patching. Um, it's only available in the studio version, but it is a super powerful tool. I did do another video on it when it was in beta, um, and you can go back and watch that if you like. But what Xnerbs is, is essentially, it works in a couple of ways. You can use it like loft. So I'll get rid of this face here. Okay, so let's say I choose this, and then I choose this, and then I go to my F for find, uh, Xnerbs, and we choose that. I've got it set to Alt V on my keyboard, okay? We're gonna get that. If we tab through, we're gonna get G1s and G2s. You could also set, select a whole loop by, you know, Alt clicking, and you can press um, Xnerbs, and you're gonna get an Xnerbs there, and you can do G1 and G2. And let's just, for example, try and patch that. It fails at G2. So if we're using the patch command, um, or if we're using Xnerbs, we can actually get more out of it. And then there's other things that you can do. You can play with the flatness of it, and um, you can say if it's natural or normal. You can do a quad-sided one, which won't always work. It needs to be sort of quad-sided. Um, and you can also uh, mess with the quality of it as well. And then once you've accepted it, it comes up as a new sheet called an Xnerbs, and then you can join it to your model. Okay, so that is um, really cool. I don't know if I showed really how powerful it is here, um, but I did show that in my other video. Um, let's have a look here. So let's get rid of this, and let's patch this on. We can go to G1, okay, and we'll check out our zebra stripes. Okay, we'll look at it from above. You can see the zebra stripes there are reasonably good. Okay, we'll go back and then we'll do it as an X nerves. Okay, and we can get right up to G2 without it failing. Okay, and then we'll look at our zebra stripes and they seem to be a lot more in unison with that. Now, I have noticed there are situations where patching and lofting, um, and another way you can use Xnerbs actually, um, is if you just don't have anything selected and you start to activate Xnerbs and then you can hold down shift and you can just start choosing edges and Bob's your uncle. So it's a super powerful tool. It'll help you patch and loft quicker, but there are cases where patching and lofting is still the way to go. Um, and in some cases, a patch will do better than Xnerbs will, and Xnerbs might start artifacts. So it's not a coverall solution to speed up your workflow. Uh, there's a time and a place for Xnerbs, and um, there's a time and a place for lofting and patching. So highly recommended that you learn both and figure out in which instances um, it's better to use Xnerbs, and in which instances it's better to use um, uh, lofting and patching. Now, um, with all of these new features and the ones from the previous versions as well, plasticity is really shaping into a really powerful CAD tool aimed at artists. It's super cheap compared to other CAD software, and I can't wait to see what another year brings. Um, I'm absolutely loving it, and um, what we'll do now is we'll do a, a short uh, video on um, how we can use some of these tools to build up a really cool uh, model. 
So Nick, the creator of Plasticity, had a really good follow along um, video on how to make this camera. Um, so I followed along um, and we'll just have a quick look at this. Okay, so this is not the exact one that he did, but he, he showed how to use all of these uh, new tools to make a camera. Uh, this is not exactly the same as what he did, but it's very similar, and I think it's a really cool, um, it's a really cool uh, camera, and you can go and follow along on his uh, not the plasticity page, but on his um, uh, YouTube. Okay, and I think that's a really uh, cool little follow along, and it teaches you a lot. But in this one, we're going to try and do this um, phone that I made. Okay. So this is the um, Alcatel kind of model phone from the 90s. I sort of based it roughly on that and made it a little bit more sci-fi. So we'll just make a new file and we'll crack into it. So what we can do, we can just sacrifice the default cube in classic Blender style. Okay, we'll make a uh, corner box, press C to make it a center box. Um, and this is quite big, so don't want it to be that big. Okay, something like that. Okay, and what we can do straight away, I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees, so I'm working from the front like that. Okay, so straight away we can just go Shift S and we can start subdividing our CVs. And what we can start doing is we can start just pulling our shapes around, make that a bit fatter at the bottom, a bit narrower in the middle and just pulling and pushing our points like we kind of would do with poly modeling so if you're familiar with poly, poly modeling this is very much how we work okay and then what we can do is we can just go into four and we can mirror this on the x press q to modify and then we can just subdivide this roof here okay it gets a bit convoluted with everything so if you can select points and you can as I said before I, I don't know if I said it before actually you can type in toggle points and set it to a key and you can just toggle points so now I've only got the ones at the top okay so I'm gonna pull these up like so I might just make this a little bit fatter I don't know just playing around with shapes right now um, and pull this down okay so now we're starting to get a basic shape okay and we can just toggle all of these points off okay so now we've got a sort of oh, it's not the same shape at all but it's it's getting there and now we can just start to really fill it these edges right to build up our wider shape and we're starting to get something very much like a phone but we might want to not do that just yet so we'll go back a couple of steps okay and we'll subdivide this face and we'll just bring this in a little bit just in point mode only okay and down the bottom as well so what we're doing is we're actually building up quite a complex surface with curvature and everything and it's overall we can scale that in a little bit so now we're getting this uh more rounded shape and then what we can do and we'll inset this or offset it rather pull this out okay and subdivide this one a couple of times go into point modes only and we'll give this a little bit of a uh, a, a grippy shape on the back okay and then we can just fill it that out move that like that and that like that all right, so now we've got this shape. It's got a bit of curvature at the front, not much, but a little bit. So it's starting to get complex. We can start to add loop cuts to our faces. Now, if it's not working and not joining to this other face here, so if we go into ISO param, which is control R, which is like a loop cut, that, that's the command. But if you click on the face, then you'll be able to control it on that face. If you're not on that face, it, or if you're not clicked on anything it might bug out a little bit so make sure that you've got the face that you want selected um, before you start to uh, make those cuts 
what we can do here is we can just start to select all of these faces. Now, somebody actually mentioned in the comments the other day, I didn't know this. If you are trying to select something and you select left to right, it will only select it if it's fully selected. And if you select, sorry, if you select right to left, it will only select it if it's fully, uh, fully encased in this uh, green. And if you select the other way, it will select everything that's in that way. So if you select left to right, so handy little tip if you didn't know. So I'm just going to select all of these and I'm just going to shift D to duplicate them and turn them into a sheet. And I'm just going to thicken this sheet out like that. And then what we can do is we can give this some rounded fillets by selecting all of these. Okay, and then fingers crossed, it'll go all the way around like that. Okay, and then down the bottom we want the same. Okay, so we're giving this kind of like rubber rubber casing on the outside. Um, and see these shapes, we've built them up without surfacing at all. It's all been solid modeling. Okay. So then we might want to just, and I know it doesn't look like the one I made before because I'm just moving quickly, but if you move a little bit more slowly and you, you deal with your bits and pieces, okay, we can bring this out, edit the CVs again, let's hide that one, and we'll just pull these out a little bit further on this one. I just want a little bit of extra curvature to that face, okay. And then um, we can hide that and obviously you can then start to just do what you would normally do um, with your normal modeling. So we can um, bring a circle in here, scale it down on the X. We'll bring them down to about where we want that to start, just below the halfway mark. And actually select it, pull it out a little bit. And we can just use our array obviously what we could do is we could then queue it out this is where it gets kind of cool because what we could do is we could then use our cvs again so shift d scale that down and thicken the sheet and then we can choose the surface subdivided a couple of times and pull this out and we're starting to get a little bit of a rounded top to that button. So we're getting that really cool button shape like that. Okay. And it's almost, a, looks like it's like some really complicated surfacing, but it only took us a few clicks. Okay. And we've got our buttons there and then we can. Pull that out like that. I don't like the overall scale of this. So I'm just going to select everything in body mode and just fatten it out a little bit. What we can also do, let's just make it a little bit different from how it actually is. Okay, so we'll find the center, make our screen roughly that size. Okay, let's just duplicate our curve. Okay, and let's make a, um, let's rotate it on the X. Okay, we can pull this out like that. We can subdivide this a couple of times and actually let's make this shift and space to make this a um, construction plane and then we can just pull these all out like oh make sure face mode is not selected and we can pull these all out like so and then when we pull this into here w okay alt control to select the edge ring okay and then we can just go like this and start to offset it and try and match it to that face. Now it's failed, so we'll just scale this up a little bit. And as we offset it, we can try and match it to that face. Now it's failing, I'm not sure why. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just try and pull it out like that. Okay, and there we've got it. Okay, so we had to we had to make a sheet out of that. And now that we've got it, we can bring this back in here like that. And we can just pull that face back 
like that. And it's just a cool little feature. You can go so on and so forth and you can keep using those techniques, okay, to build something up um, that's really cool. If you wanted to, you could then start to sort of like build up some stuff like this that you've got here, these sort of the speaker. I think I turned it into a camera on the one that I did. Um, but just a little of example of how you can use these tools to really build something that looks really cool up really quickly without having to do any surfacing. So I didn't do a patch, a loft, or an x -nerbs in there. And I got these cool surfaces. So I think this, the point I'm trying to make is that whether you get the India or the studio license, you're gonna have access to super powerful tools and it's gonna be awesome for you and you're gonna be able to build up really cool things. So if we go back to the model that I made earlier, so for example, this, I don't, I don't know, I spent maybe 40 minutes on this. The one that we just made now, I spent about 10 minutes on. So really, really cool stuff. So stick around um, for the videos, like and subscribe. And if you're gonna buy plasticity, use the code REFUGE10 so you can get a 10% uh, discount off at checkout. See you in the next one. Tschüss.